I was actually very intimidated the first time I saw this boat. It is really big. But once I got on board, snaked up the river for a little bit, had two goes at the first bridge, it is really relaxing. You know, you only need a driver's license to drive this. It's huge. And all you need is a driver's license. But now, steady sailing. Houseboats are exactly that. They're a floating home, with everything from massive bedrooms with en-suites to spa baths. Think of them as luxury afloat. This beauty was overkill for one guy. It's more suited to a family. But there's a camera crew you don't see that also needs somewhere to sleep. The locals told me that the river was full of fish, and even a hack like me could land something. Little did they know just how bad a fisherman I am. It's a good thing I went to the grocery store and bought some sausages and steaks. Ah. Forget this. I'm gonna go for a swim, have some dinner, go to bed. One of my favourite things about having a houseboat is that you can find a nice spot of your own and end the day with a refreshing swim. Plus, of course, there's the added benefit of using the boat as a diving board. You know what? There are a lot harder ways to end the day. I have a barbecue, I have a lovely glass of red wine, I have a beautiful view, the sun's going down. You know what? I almost have no stress at all. Tomorrow, I'm going to get up early, I'm going to go to Mungo National Park, I'm going to go and check out all the desert colours. Now I'm going to go and eat this and go to bed. I reckon this is the reason why people fall in love with life on the river. It's incredibly serene and beautiful, and around every bend, the magic scenes just keep evolving. Relaxing on the back of the boat in my own piece of wilderness, I couldn't help but think just how lucky I was. From the cooling waters of the Murray River, I headed into the dry interior of the New South Wales outback to a prehistoric World Heritage listed landscape called Mungo National Park. The drive there is only about an hour and a half north of Wentworth, but in that short time, the landscape quickly turns from fertile and green farmland to the most arid of deserts. Meeting me at the other end was Graham from Harry Nanya Tours. He's one of the traditional landowners of the area, coming from the Parkinji people that once lived along much of the Murray and Darling rivers. It's hard to believe that what we're driving through was once a huge inland lake. Today, it's a dust bowl that rarely sees any rain, with the only inhabitants being kangaroos and emus. Mungo National Park is part of the Willandra Lakes World Heritage Area, a chain of lakes that dried up around 14,000 years ago. The number one attraction is the crescent-shaped dune, called the Walls of China, which stretches along the eastern shore of the lake bed. These dunes of clay and sand are gradually eroding away, leaving behind a fragile landscape of wrinkled outcrops. Yeah, this area is just natural. Erosion that exposes bones and everything just from the elements. Oh, look at this. What's this? This guy here, Morg, this here is a wombat. He'd be in a time frame of between around eight to 16,000 years old. This is his actual upper jaw and his teeth here, and that's his front teeth. The bottom jaw has actually been washed away with the elements. But, um, Bones are being exposed here all the time just from weathering. Because the Willandra Lakes is probably one of the oldest, largest natural excavation sites in the world. You're not really? talking hundreds of years, you're talking thousands of years. And all just animals? And... No, not only that, we've also had um, a skeleton here, Mungo One, which was a lady. And really? it was an actual cremation that took place. And she is the oldest modern human female cremation burial in the world at approximately um, uh, 36 to 40,000 years old. And wow. They also had datings there and believe she may be around 26 to 28,000 years old. So there's actually debates on the actual time frame of Bunga One. So this is years and years before 
any other civilization in the world, really. Oh, that's right. Because the area here with Mungo National Park or the Willandra Lake system is dating back to human occupation for approximately 60,000 years, which is quite incredible. That's amazing. But this is happening all the time, mate. What I'll do is we'll go for a stroll and I'll show you what's happening and the erosion affects what's happening on the landscape around the entire area. Perfect. It's going to show us. Cool. This is a perfect example here of um, different layers of time. The higher white layer is a, a Zanka unit, which is approximately 15 to 30,000 years old. Right. Then the older layer is a Mungo unit, which is approximately 30 to 50,000 years old. Yeah. And perfect out there is as you look out there, you see the white layer going around. Right. And, yep, right across. And then the lower section, this red layer goes right through, which is an older layer, the Mungo. And the oldest layer is this lake bed which crossed over and oh, that's right. approximately 50 to 550,000 years old. So what we've got here is approximately three different time units. Also in the wake of the moving dune system are the remnants of indigenous habitation from tens of thousands of years ago. It's these remains that put Mungo into the headlines way back in 1969 when a scientist stumbled across the charred bones of a human. These were later to be known as Mungo woman carbon dated as being at least 26,000 years old. Six years later, Mungo Man was found and dated as being 62,000 years of age. These discoveries forced the rewriting of the history books and made people rethink the timeline of human habitation in Australia. It's quite daunting to think that well over half a millennia ago, someone may have sat right where we are now and enjoyed this same incredible sunset. For more information on this or any other episode of The Travel Bug, log on to thetravelbugtv.com and you can find out where I'm heading to next.